on March 17th, the Irish celebrate their beloved patron saint, St. Patrick, with a day full of joyous revelry. The air is alive with the sounds of parades, the clinking of glasses in pubs, and the mischievous laughter of those who are eager to let loose. The day of celebration draws, and children wake up to a rare treat. They're not required to attend school. It's a time for indulgence, especially for those who gave up something for Lent. They can treat themselves on St. Patrick's Day before returning to God on March 18th and resuming their penance until Easter. The Irish are fiercely proud of St. Patrick and the traditions associated with his day. And it's not hard to see why. St. Patrick was a remarkable figure who brought Christianity to the pagan Irish in the 5th century AD, converting them with his teachings and leading them towards the path of God. Few know that St. Patrick was actually born in Britain, in the village of Bana Venta Bernay. It's a stone's throw away from the modern-day Wilton Marina, kind of near the corner of A5 and Daventry Road. Really, it's about a two-minute drive from the old location to the revived Thai massage and spa in Daventry. And while there's no certainty about where he was born, some believe it was right there. Others believe it was in Lowland, Scotland, while others claim that it was in Wales. But what's certain is that he was born on the other side of the Irish Sea. St. Patrick referred to Britain as his home. As a teenager, St. Patrick was kidnapped by slave traders. He was sold into slavery in Ireland. He was assigned to work with sheep and pigs in County Antrim for six years. He toiled under the hot sun, caring for the animals and praying to God for strength and faith. The smell of manure and sweat, it was overpowering as St. Patrick tended to the sheep and pigs. He worked tirelessly, his hands callous from the rough wool of the sheep, his skin sunburnt and parched. While caring for the sheep in County Antrim, St. Patrick prayed a lot to God, and his faith grew even stronger. He began to hear voices, and since he didn't talk to sheep often really stood out as a unique experience. Interestingly, in 2015, French researchers showed that sheep are also fond of positive interaction with humans, just like dogs. Their ears go a little bit floppy when you pet them. But that's an interesting story for another time. So there was St. Patrick, talking to not much of anyone, and then one day an unknown presence popped up and said to him, Your ship is ready. He knew it was time to flee, so he did. He was able to escape and traveled to the coast. That's when he met some sailors who took him back to his family in Britain. After he safely returned home, he began his studies for the priesthood, convinced by another dream to return to Ireland and convert the people. An angel came to him and told him that the people of Ireland wanted him to return to save them. We beg you, holy boy, come back and walk among us again. And so St. Patrick returned to Ireland, this time as a missionary. He later became bishop there. As bishop of Ireland, St. Patrick worked tirelessly to establish the church and its teachings in the country. He traveled extensively, preaching and converting people to Christianity and founding monasteries and churches throughout the land. Today, St. Patrick is remembered not only as the patron saint of Ireland, but also as a symbol of Irish identity and culture. His legacy lives on in the traditions and customs that have developed around the celebration of St. Patrick's Day, from parades and green clothing to festive meals and Irish music. St. Patrick, one of Ireland's patron saints. These are Interesting Things with J.C.